And I am very happy to introduce our special guest speaker for today, Dr. Ma Vivian C. Camacho. Uh, Bam Vivian is the current station manager of the UPLB Limnological St uh, Station, an associate professor, six of the Animal Biology Division, Institute of Biological Sciences. Dr. Camacho is also the museum's curator for freshwater fishes. She is also the auditor of the Philippine Society for Freshwater Science. Dr. Camacho obtained her PhD in marine science from Nagasaki University in Japan and her MS in aquaculture at the Asian Institute of Technology in Thailand. She has been actively involved in several research projects in marine and freshwater ecology and biodiversity as well as, aqu as well as aquaculture. Some of her projects include zooplankton, macroinvertebrates, and fish biodiversity, captive breeding of the endemic uh, fishes bia and ayungin, biology and ecology of the invasive fish, uh, knife fish, and most recently, the conservation of Taal Lake's freshwater endemic fish uh, called tawilis. And she has published several scientific papers, local and inter in local and international journals, uh, on topics such as uh, aquaculture, fish biology, zooplankton, and macroinvertebrate communities. And uh, she has um, produced technical materials also on fish culture and biology. In 2018, Dr. Camacho and her research team have have received the Parfi Research and Development Award for their project on knife fish invasion uh, in Laguna de Bay. Dr. Camacho has presented a number of papers in international and local symposia <laughs> and is a resource person in national meetings for policy formulation on fish invasion and lake conservation. So ladies and gentlemen, let us all welcome Dr. Ma Vivian C. Camacho. Thank you, Floor. Good morning, Ma'am and very nice introduction. So I'm very excited you know, to share with you the highlights of our research on the successful ex situ culture of the endangered tawilis. No, yeah, for Batangueños, they pronounce it as tawilis, uh, mabilis, or the, what, uh, the scientific name of uh, Sardinella tawilis. Now this project is funded by the OST Picard. To start with, uh, let me give an overview now of the state of Philippine freshwater fish diversity. According to FishBase, uh, Froes and Polly in 2021, the Philippines has a total of about 337 freshwater fish species. Now of this, now 59% um, 59% are native and 26% are endemic and about 15% are introduced. Now, in a recent uh, report of Dr. Torres, uh, in the recently held um, webinar no, by Dr. Guerrero on uh, commercially important freshwater fish, no, she reported that um, they are currently assessing and reassessing about 104 freshwater species. And according to her, 50% of this are actually threatened. So this is, uh, according to Torres, personal communication. Okay, so uh, one of the endemic uh, species which uh, I will be discussing is tawilis, no, or tawilis sa Tagalog. Um, this, um, I, I would like to share with you no, one interesting uh, fact no, about tawilis. Now, so this is an archaic map no, drawn by Father Pedro Murillo Velarde, uh, who is a Jesuit priest no, in 1734, showing that what we know as Taal Lake, so ito yon, was previously connected to Balayan Bay, which is a marine water. So this is the channel no, collecting, uh, connecting um, what we now know as Taal Lake to Balayan Bay. So in other words, um, Taal Lake was previously uh, uh, marine water. So um, a connect, uh, uh, Balayan Bay and uh, uh, what we now know as, as Taal Lake was previously connected by a large channel and large enough no, for uh, marine vessels to pass through. Now, however, a series of volcanic eruption in 1754 spilled a large amount of tephra. So what is tephra? It's a fragmental material ejected during volcanic explosion no, such as rock fragments. 
close this channel and um, actually a uh, close majority of the channel and constricted and narrowed it down to what we now know as Pansipit River, no, which is the only known outlet of the lake. Now, in the process, no, Tawilis was trapped and over time, Taal Lake desalinated or became freshwater. And together with it, Tawilis adapted to its hydrological and biological condition. Now, uh, to give other information about Tawilis, no, Sardinella Tawilis was previously Harengula Tawilis in the 1920s. So the author of this species is actually Herde, 1927. But in 1980s, uh, the genus was changed to Sardinella. Sardinella. So uh, we now know of it as Sardinella tawilis. Now it belongs to family Clupeidae, where other fishes uh, would be low. So belong. So it is a family of herrings, shads, sardines, and menhadens. And um, there are about 216 species of Clupeidae. Uh, but under genus Sardinella, uh, there are about 22 species uh, worldwide. And the Philippines has about uh, more than 50% of it. About 12 species of sardinella are found in the Philippines. Now for other morphological characteristics, they have um, torpedo-shaped bodies. Now strong, they are strong fast swimmers, now traveling in schools. Most of them live in tropical oceans, while some in freshwater. Uh, sardinella tawilis itself is very small. It's a small pelagic fish, you know, which is commercially important, reaching up to 15.6 centimeters. So that's the maximum um, recorded size uh, with average sizes of about 10 to 11 centimeters and weighing less than 4.6 to about 35.9 grams, you know, according to Mucha in 2015. Now for um, other characteristics, no, they have laterally compressed bodies with bellies covered in tough scale-like scutes. They have a single triangular dorsal fin, a fork caudal fin. They possess long slender, slender gill rakers in their mouths, no, which is not visible in this picture. And to be able to identify the species of sardinella, you need to look at uh, the number of pores no, in their scutes as well as the uh, length of the snout and the number of gill rakers in their mouth. So these are important taxonomic characters used to identify species of sardinella. Tawilis is uh, endemic no, to a single location in the Philippines. It is only found in Lake Taal, no, formerly uh, known as Lake Bonbon, bon, no, according to Whitehead in 1985 and Papa et al. 2008. So it is uh, the only freshwater species of sardinella, which has been established no, by Willet et al. 2014 to be closely related to the marine sister species, which is sardinella huvaliensis. Now, uh, just a bit on information about phylogeny and feeding ecology. Now, the recent genetic study uh, of uh, Willet et al. 2014 uh, indicated that Estawil is actually diverge you know, from S. hualiensis in the late Pleistocene. Now, late Pleistocene meaning this is about 26 million years ago to about 11,700 years ago prior to the formation of Taal Lake in the 18th century. And um, they tried to, uh, uh, this was supported you know, by the fact that uh, these two species, si S. tawilis and si S. hualiensis, um, they have small genetic distances and a large they, they share you know, a large proportion of haplotypes um, in the S7, cytochrome B, and 16S gene regions. And uh, in terms of feeding ecology, they feed primarily on copepods and some on cladocerans and rotifers. So Papa et al. in 2008 um, had, uh, <coughs> me, had an intensive or extensive rather study of uh, the feeding ecology of tawilis. Now, tawilis was declared endangered by the International Union for Conservation of Nature uh, in 2019 by Hata et al. No, 2019. But um, if you have noticed in the internet, no, you might find no, an errata version which was published in 2018. But uh, let me correct that. It's actually, uh, tawilis was actually uh, uh, declared endangered in 2019 not in 2018. So it is endemic to a single lake uh, in Taal Lake. 
It has an area of occupancy of about less than 244 kilometers squared and an extent of occurrences of about 297 kilometers squared. Now, um, this is uh, one uh, of the reasons no, why Tawilis was declared endangered. The second reason is uh, Tawilis is currently facing major threats no, due to overexploitation, pollution, competition, and or predation with introduced fishes. No, according to Villanueva et al. in 1996, Mamaril 2001, Mucha et al. 2004, 2011, and Kilang et al. 2011. And another reason kung bakit dineclare na endangered si Tawilis as I, uh, because of the declining uh, catch. Um, it has been documented that the cash, catch, uh, Tawilis catch declined significantly in 1998. And uh, after um, coming up with series of computations no, based from the data of catch per unit effort in uh, 2000, um, in 1998, 2005, and 2010, they found out that the harvest of Tawilis declined by 49% over the past 10 years. So this is at least from um, 2007 hanggang 2017. This is by Mucha et al. 2011. Now, the birth of the project. So this is actually what... Uh, uh, I am excited to share with you about now. So the project um, was uh, uh, of this, this project no, officially started in July of last year, July 2020. But this was initially uh, conceptualized and initiated uh, early January uh, 2020, no, when the phreatic explosion of the volcano occurred. No, which prompted the OST Picard, no, headed by Dr. Reynaldo V. Ebora, uh, to commission the UPLB Limnological Station to come up with an emergency research proposal with the primary goal of saving Tawilis from possible extinction no, in case of a massive abortive explosion. So our research team conducted a study no, to develop protocols for capture collection, transport, and initial rearing of Tawilis in captivity XC2 or outside its natural habitat, which is a lake, no, which is aimed towards conserving the species and saving it from possible extinction in case of a massive explosion of Taal volcano. Now, there was an urgent need no, for intervention to save or conserve the weedies and uh, explore the possibility of rearing and breeding them in captivity. So let me just give no, a, a, an overview of how we did it. So. Uh, we went to Talisay, Batangas, and this is uh, these are pictures of um, our uh, collection. No? So collection protocols were adapted no, from the currently used methods by commercial fishermen. So this is with the use of beach seine net. And uh, these methods are actually further described in uh, several publications in Taalik. No? Um, examples are those of Mutia et al. 2000. 18, 2011, and 2004. So we collected uh, them using beach seine net. No, so this involves um, setting the beach seine net in the coral at dawn and then pulling them towards the shore. No, so these are the pictures of locals no, helping us out in pulling the beach seine net towards the shore. And let me just show you a glimpse of um, a video on, on uh, uh, showing no, the, the collection method. Okay, so about 10 to 20 locusts help us out in pushing the net no, after setting it in the corral during dawn. So they pull it towards the shore. And then Okay, then we, we prepare our plastic bags and then the pail uh, to collect them gently you know, from the nets and then itinatakbo na to dun sa aming uh, transport tank no? uh, na nakalagay sa truck. No? Okay. So this is another video showing uh, collection of our tawilis. Okay.
Okay, so the next is um, before actually collecting tawilis, no, before the transport and all, uh, our tanks, no, uh, which are um, uh, in uh, our, our tanks or, or uh, transport tanks, no, in, in the truck, uh, we, we actually collect uh, initially uh, lake water, no, using a pump and a hose. Before doing that, we also check. Um, uh, the water quality of the lake water to ensure optimal conditions. Now, after doing so, we, we uh, transport them to the UPLB Linological Station for about one hour to one and a half hours. And then pagdating sa station, okay, this is what we do. So we take them out from the uh, transport tank no, using some pail and basin. Okay, that's how we do it. Okay. And then as soon as the fish arrives at the station, notawilis are transferred in culture tanks. So ito yung mga culture tanks namin. And water quality monitoring commences every hour no, during the first day of culture. Now water quality is also checked daily, no, at least twice uh, a day thereafter. So signs of post-capture stress, no, such as uh, morphological signs, uh, swimming behavior, signs of diseases are also checked visually and recorded using a GoPro underwater camera. And then um, tawilis are given live feed, no, which is uh, freshwater zooplankton. So this is a video of uh, feeding no, nung aming tawilis. So we have a pipette and then we give them live feed, no, yung aming zooplankton, which is cladoceran. And then feeding behavior is also observed visually not to check any signs of loss of appetite. Now to maintain our zooplankton culture, we have our live feed production laboratory at the station. So we culture phytoplankton, uh, genus Canadesmus, and zooplankton, no, such as Moina and Daphnia. Now these cultures are maintained daily no, and their conditions and densities check no, to ensure sufficient supply for our Tawilis culture. And then morphological measurements are also done, no, such as uh, mini-measure yung weight, fork length, and total length, as well as uh, morphological examinations are being done no, to check abnormalities such as signs of stress and diseases and determine the extent of physical injuries incurred no, post-collection, such as scale loss and uh, signs of hemorrhage. Now, for the highlights of the results, no, we have actually developed efficient collection protocol no, which yielded high survival uh, of our tawilis. No, sabihin na natin 80 to 90 percent as well as efficient transport protocol which also had uh, yielded no, high survival. Uh, we have successfully kept them alive for more than two months now. We have determined suitable live feed for them. No, however, survival rate is still low. No, we only have about 10% survival rate, but uh, at least no, we have identified no crucial factors for their survival. So just to show you uh, a video, short video of our uh, tawilis in our culture tanks. So ito na sila, which has been kept uh, alive no, in captivity for more than two months now. Okay. And then another video. Okay. So we have also documented no signs of post capture stress. Um, observations no, of swimming behavior of the willies in the housing tanks. Uh, we, we, we have noted, no, after observing it, we have noted that they frequently bump no, into the walls of the enclosure. No, individuals in housing tanks that did not survive no, were seen to have injuries in their snout and upper and lower jaws as well as fin bases. 
such as pectoral, dorsal, and pelvic fins, no, probably due to physical trauma incurred while swimming in the enclosure. No, injuries appeared to be hemorrhages in the aforementioned areas, uh, while some individuals also had hemorrhage in the caudal fin ray bases along with extensive scale loss. So my extensive scale loss as well as hemorrhaging in uh, different parts of the body. And then we also um, observed uh, a twisted caudal peduncle no? in, in one of our uh, Tawili sample. So which we uh, hypothesize as signs of, uh, uh, signs of transport, capture and transport stress. Now, uh, what are the impacts no, of our research? So our research would have a very high potential no, for, to, for conservation or to save tawilis no, in case of possible uh, eruption of the volcano. So since tawilis is currently faced with, threat, with, with different threats no, such as over uh, exploitation, um, water quality uh, deterioration, um, the, the knowledge no, which will be derived from our research would also be valuable uh, in order to produce no, a number of uh, Tawilis individuals no, for restocking no, in case the wild population dwindles due to increasing uh, threats. Then uh, this would also have a high potential no, for, for aquaculture. So um, for local fisher folks, a source of livelihood, although Admittedly, we are still in the infancy stage. So nabuhay pa lang namin yung tawilis. So ang next namin is uh, to develop protocols on how we can increase their number uh, through captive breeding uh, uh, research or project. Now, uh, probably I, it is important no, to share with you some of the, no, aside from uh, captive breeding and artificial propagation, there are several efforts in place no, for uh, related to the conservation of the willies. No one is no it has um, talik no has actually been listed as a protected seascape, and this is managed and uh, administered by the Taal Volcano Protected Landscape uh, PAMB or Protected Area Management Board. No, and as a result, they have uh, reported a reduction in the number of fish cages in the lake by 50%, no, according to Santos' personal communication in 2017. No, another uh, conservation action is uh, somehow protecting them from overfishing, no, as suggested by Mamaril 2001. Um, several active uh, fishing methods no, should be banned, such as beach sea net, uh, motorized bush net, throughout the entire lake, no, according to Santos and Jay Torres, personal communication 2017. And um, attempts no, to protect the spawning population and habitat of this species are in place. No, Atawili's reserve area was established in uh, Lake Taal under the Unified Rules and Regulations on Fisheries of the Al Volcano Protected Landscape or URRFTDPL. Now, in the TRA, only passive and traditional fishing gears like gill net, spear gun, hook and line are allowed, now, according to Mucha et al. 2016 and 2018. Then, another proposition is translocation of the Tawilis to another lake, now, which is Lake Lanao in Mindanao. Although, um, um, this has not been uh, materialized yet. So this is uh, another way by which we can conserve uh, tawilis. Now for the future research direction, uh, I admit we have uh, a lot of things to do. Uh, and we are, as I've said, we are still in the infancy stage of knowing um, several aspects no, of, of Tawili, such as their biology, ecology, kaya ba siyang ibreed, and all. So I've uh, outlined here uh, future research direction. So we need to uh, do further research in order to refine no, our methods uh, of, collect of collection, transport, and rearing to increase their survival. As I have said, we, uh, we have only achieved 10% uh, survival rate. No, we also have to uh, conduct no, stocking density experiments to determine which would yield highest, the highest survival. 
we also need to do live feed experiments. So given different live feeds, uh, which one would uh, result in higher survival of our tawilis. And we also need to examine you know, diseases or infections of tawilis uh, under captivity. Then uh, we also need to do captive breeding. So ito talaga yung ultimate goal. So to uh, develop protocols to increase their number. So we can explore hormone induction or natural spawning. And then uh, we also need to look at embryology and early development, you know, as well as larval rearing and grow out experiments you know, for uh, possible aquaculture uh, use. Ayon. So that was, I think, my last slide. So thank you very much for attending this webinar. And I would like to uh, thank uh, those people who help us uh, in our research. So of course, we have the OSCP card. Uh, thank you very much for the funding and for the permits, no, yung Taal Volcano Protected Landscape uh, Protected Area Management uh, Board uh, of DNR and also yung Talisay uh, local government units and as well as local fisher folks. So thank you very much for listening. Thank you very much, Ma'am uh, Vives. Uh, I think marami pong mga tanong ang ating mga members ng audience today. Um, but before that, mayroon kaming special uh, activity for you. We're just trying this out. So hopefully walang technical difficulty. Uh, mayroon tayong pop quiz. So we hope na mayroon tayong mga participants. Let's see. Okay. Okay, so please join the quiz. And we'll start it now. Tawilis is found in others. So, yes or no? And the answer is yes. no. So actually, <laughs> the correct answer is no. Uh, but 20% uh, of you answered yes. So make sure, huh? Tandaan niyo po, Tawilis is endemic to the Taal Lake. Okay. Next question. Alam niyo po ba ang extant species? <laughs> Magpa-explain tayo kay ma'am later kapag hindi natin naintindihan. Okay, tapos na? Okay, okay. So, 58% answered yes and... Uh, 42, half, half lang. <laughs> and the, ans the answer is, ma'am, anong answer? No. <laughs> the answer should be no. no. Why, ma'am? Uh, ang closest, closest extant, extant, ibig sabihin living species of Tawilis is Sardinella hualiensis, no, which was recently established by Willet et al. in 2014. All right. Next question. Okay. The first successful ex situ captivity of Tawilis has been achieved by the UPLB Limnological Station. I think kano naman ito, no? Obvious. Uh, obvious naman ito. Wala uh, naman 100%. Siguro. Oh my God. Ba <laughs> okay. Oh, may nagno-no. Tumataas pa. Uy. Um, yung first successful ex situ captivity of Tawilis has been achieved by the limnological station at UPLB. So the answer should be yes. And uh, going to the fourth question, Tawilis is exclusively freshwater. Okay, let's check your answers. 80% said it's yes and 20% said it's no. Mom, what's the correct answer? Yes. <laughs> the, the answer should be yes. Okay. Ah. Oh, kasi Taal Lake is ano eh, freshwater, di ba? So in, endemic sila doon. So exclusively freshwater sila. And our last question would be... And let's see the answers. Oh, kahate. So, 43%. Ma'am, explain. That, Actually, what's the answer? Nakakalito, nakakalito din. Ang answer okay. dapat is no. Kasi uh, yung na-publish kasi nila in 2018 was an errata version. So, it was later published yung correct form in 2019. 
So siguro nakakalito din. Actually, sa ibang mga news uh, articles din, they say 2018. Pero okay. nung research ko nga din, 2019 po. <laughs> Alright. So yon. And that ends our quiz. Sana nag-enjoy kayo. And uh, <laughs> <laughs> sorry ha, nalilito din ako kasi first time ko din ginagawa ito. No? So I'll stop my sharing. Tama ba? Okay, so let's proceed to the uh, open forum. So we have uh, our chat here, chat box. So kung meron kayo mga tanong, uh, please put it here in the chat box na lang. And okay, so we'll, while waiting, okay. wala pa tayong tanong sa chat box. So uh, <laughs> siguro ako muna magtatanong, ma'am. Um, yung, yung Fish Arc program was actually, uh, if if I'm not mistaken, uh, established way back, around 10 years sa po ba siya or 15 years ago to fish arc for other kinds of fishes. Tama po ba? Oh, actually, kung hindi ko maalala yung mm -hmm. um, year, ano, but this was started way, way back no, uh, by Dr. Pablo P. Ocampo, the late mm -hmm. Dr. Pablo P. Ocampo. So we had this project, uh, fish arc project mm -hmm. uh, for diminutive <laughs> yung mga nakikita maliliit. siya, mga maliliit na peces in lakes and rivers in southern uh, Luzon no, and other parts of the Philippines. So um, this was also supported by Picard. So this is not the first time no, we're saving mm -hmm. our endemics. So may, may mga uh, efforts na rin no, in the previous years. Yes po. But uh, nagkataon lang po ngayon na mas uh, baga, the focus shifted to saving Tawilis because of the Taal Volcano explosion. Yes, the urgency of the... Yes. Okay. So uh, we have a question from Timothy para, para Kikay. Uh, based on the current observations, would it be possible for our hub, local hobbyists who want to volunteer to contribute to the conservation of this species in the near future? Pwede ho ba kaya? Mag-volunteer yung ating mga local hobbyists probably... Uh, may mga tanks sila. Meron sila mga, I don't know. Um, pwede ba yun? Could a system such as uh, like that, pwede ho bang i-institutionalize later on? Anong opinion nyo pagdating doon? Well, sa tingin ko pwede naman. But uh, right now, no, ang, ang status kasi is uh, we're still trying to refine no, ang, ang, yung protocols namin for mm -hmm. uh, rearing them in captivity. In fact, napakababa pa ng survival rate. So hopefully, if na-fine-tune na namin, we could actually tap no, other uh, people no, like hobbies and other mm -hmm. institutions to collaborate no, para uh, we could all uh, culture them no, in different uh, areas no, in the Philippines as well as in different uh, tanks or pan ponds. Sorry. Yes, pa. Uh, additional comment from Timothy. Uh, Tawilis being a freshwater fish makes breeding uh, breeding it more achievable compared to its saltwater relatives and our local hobbyists can be considered an important resource in these conservation yeah. efforts. And thank you very much, Timothy, for that idea. Uh, dapat ano ka, malaki kang... Ma'am, kung magkakataon na uh, magiging possible yung ganong uh, mechanism, how would, gano'ng kalaki ang kailangan na uh, resource ng isang local hobbyist to, <laughs> <laughs> to do that, to do that or to participate in that conservation effort? No, actually, uh, I would like to apologize kasi uh, I can't really divulge no, the, mm -hmm. the protocols kasi we're planning to apply it for patent. So, yeah, hindi ko pa masabi kung ano yung specific na sizes ng tanks, uh, what are the important water quality parameters no, which mm -hmm. you need to monitor, uh, and ano yung mga requirements no, for it to survive under captivity. But medyo malaki-laking budget kasi... Of course, you all know that it's a pelagic fish and ang taalik napakalaki <laughs> na natural yes. habitat niya. And if you put them in a in a tank, no, which is smaller than, of course, it's natural habitat, obviously. So ang hirap, ang, ang matindi yung kanilang adaptation no, mm -hmm. to live in such a small environment. Okay, so that's uh, one consideration. Yes. Okay. So uh, from Dave General, uh, Ma'am, would one of the San Pablo lakes be more than suitable for the ex to breeding of the Tawilis? So instead of Lake Marawi? Uh, Lake Lanao kasi yung uh, 
may nagsuggest kasi si Dr. Mamaril na mm-hmm. Lake Lanao ang gagamitin uh, yes, po. para ma-translocate itong mga tawilis. Well, we can mm-hmm. explore that but of course, it's very difficult to to uh, well introduce no uh once uh well to uh how, how would you say this to transfer no tawilis from one environment to another. So, hindi din natin alam kung anong magiging ecological impact nito mm-hmm. no, sa new environment like yung sa Seven Lakes of San Pablo. And to start with, we need to study the the ecological no conditions of San Pablo Lake and then to determine ano yung possible impact nito sa kung meron mang native uh, fish species dyan sa Seven Lakes no as well as yung habitat mismo. No? Yeah. So, this is quite tricky. So, hindi kami basa-basa nagsasuggest ng ganon. So, we're, we're just trying to culture them in captivity and hopefully i-restock din namin siya sa, sa Lake sa Taal no? in case na mag-dwindle nga significantly yung kanilang stock yes. in the wild. So, yes. incidentally, ma'am, uh, after the explosion, uh, syempre, medyo ano na Volcano Island. Marami na ho siyang mga uh, debris, di ba? marami na ho mga volcanic uh, materials na nandun. Uh, any... Any efforts or any studies right now that uh, would characterize yung water quality and yung environment that uh, would make the uh, yung para mas magtrive palalo yung mga yung mga tawilis don? Merong bang pagbabago? Actually, may group. Uh, I think it was UST, no? Sina. Mm-hmm. Uh, led by Dr. Papa, sila yung nag-aaral talaga ng ecology niyan. I think they went there to to uh, measure yung water quality parameters no right yes, after the, well a few weeks after the explosion uh, nung January 2020 yon of yung last year and they found out that may deterioration sa water quality but mm-hmm, mm-hmm. they have not observed any mortality of tawili. So walang okay. mortality ng tawilis or mass mortality even. And uh, he actually hypothesized that baka daw merong uh, nagtatago sa ilalim ng mga tawilis. So meron silang <laughs> safe haven or uh, area dun sa ilalim. May underwater uh, cavern yes. or oh, something. So hindi pa natin alam yon kung may ganun nga talaga. So we, we really need to explore uh, well, do some research pa on that aspect kasi wala pa rin nakaka-determine or nakaka-establish kung saan sila pumupunta pag pumuputok yung, yung Bulkang Taal kasi o nga, no? for several years, 33 ang volcanic explosions ng Taal Volcano since the 1500s. I think. And then nandun pa rin sila. No? Yes. So oo. baka nga pinagtataguan. I don't know. Anyway, yes, so so from uh, Joshua, Michael Jonas, um, from the consumer's end, uh, how can they contribute to the conservation of tawilis? Well, yeah. Magandang tanong yan. So, wag mo nang kakain ng tawilis, <laughs> no? especially during close season. No? Close season kasi ngayon, no? um, mm-hmm. March, April. So, bawal talaga manghuli. Bawal magbenta sa restaurant. No? Bawal magbenta sa mga palengke. And pag nahuli kayo, may penalty. Mm-hmm, no? mm-hmm. So, pwedeng... Uh, may fine na malaki and uh, may administrative case na pwedeng i-file yung TVTL PAMB. So actually very active sila na nagpo-police around uh, Tagaytay, no? And you can act, you can also report kung may nakita kayo nagse-serve sa restaurant, pwede yung i-report sa kanila. And as consumers, wag mo nang kakain ng two months and mag-shift na muna sa ibang isda. Marami pa namang is, ibang isda uh-huh. diyan like tilapia, pwede din namang yung counterpart ni sa marine, yung tamban. <laughs> Although, syempre, mas masarap yung tawilis. Mas tawilis. masarap talaga siya. Uh, yung lasa niya ay mas masarap compared dun sa marine counterpart. So, yun. Huwag mo nang kakain. And then, yun. <laughs> so, okay. yun sa naisip ko na contribution ng consumers. Oh. So, yung mga pumupunta muna ng Tagaytay, uh, make sure na wag muna kayong bibili ng tawilis. Um, just so para yung demand would uh, would not peak also. Alam naman natin yun na uh, kaya naman may nagbebenta kasi meron ding demand. So okay, so from William Joshua Tan, actually marami siyang questions, five agad, regular wow. regular contributor ito ng questions sa webinars <laughs> ng Museum of Natural History. So uh so okay. first, so okay, so first, uh yung tawilis po ba meron ba siyang migratory route? Uh, um as uh, para yung pinag-usapan natin kanina like mayroong ba siyang pinagtataguan kaya siya nakaka-survive nakaka or 
aside from siguro ang iniisip din ni William is uh, from from the lake itself can it go upstream go towards somewhere else so yun pong actually uh wala pang nakaka-document noon and it's it's a very interesting well magandang i-research yun no, no maglagay ng tags alam mo yung GPS yung nakatag sila and para malaman mo kung saan talaga sila pumupunta or nagmamigrate mm. so it's it's actually another uh, potential uh, no research no kung kung saan talaga sila pumupunta or nagmamigrate but there had been no records of uh, migration upstream or lumalabas ba sila ng Pacific River wala so talagang sa taalik lang sila nagsa-stay okay. so so far uh, pero I, we may be wrong after yes. siguro kung may mag-research na on that so hindi pa rin alam talaga all right so yeah. second question does the introduced paracromis manangguensis bring a, a big threat to tawilis Well, uh, it is actually considered as one of the threats. Um, well, aside from, uh, well, paracromis, I, I'm not quite familiar with the feeding ecology of this species. No? But of course, uh, yung mga introduced species would have certain uh, impact, no? such as habitat displacement. So, nagko-compete sila. And of course, yung use of resources din mismo sa lake. Hmm. So, isa din yan sa mga in-identify why uh, why uh, tawilis no was uh, was classified as endangered by IUCN. So one of the reasons yung dumadami introduced species sa Lake Taal. Okay, for the benefit of yung ating mga other viewers, uh, ano po yung local name ng Paracromis manangguensis? Hmm. Paracromis. Mm-hmm. Uh, hindi ba yan yung I'm, I I don't know if I'm I'm I may be mistaken, di ba Jaguar Gapote yan? Okay, sige, let's just see. Tingnan na lang <laughs> yeah, natin. Sure. <laughs> Oo. Pero yung yung para chromis po ba yan ma'am ay ornamental or is it uh, for feed? For yung food? nagtanong baka alam niya. <laughs> oh. Okay. William I'm baka not... alam mo so paki-post na lang diyan for for everyone to see. <laughs> so third question mo since tatlo. Oo daw yun daw yun. Oh, okay, sige. Ah, dahil <laughs> lima yung kapote. Lima yung tanong mo, dami-dami. So, is there future Thank plans to culture other native species of Taal Lakes? May native species po ba tayo sa Taal Lake? And any plans to culture them in the future? Ah, uh, At present kasi ang, ang focus talaga is tawilis. So I know that there are about 22 species of fish you know, in Lake Taal. Uh, correct me if I'm wrong. Siya lang ang alam kong um, endemic talaga. Mm-hmm. No, and uh, doon lang sa Taal makikita. And most of the fishes caught in Taal Lake are introduced. No, ang um, pinakamarami din of course is tilapia, no. Yes, okay. Uh-uh. Tilapia Or, and we also, they also have Sarotero don Melanotheron, yung aroyo. Aroyo. Which is introduced also. Okay. So, uh, the fourth question is there future for use of this project for aqua for aquaculture so are you looking towards that ma'am you know yes, um, mm-hmm. making uh, making the technology available para later on ano ba ang ang idea po ba natin is from tawilis ay hindi na siya rear uh, inside the lake it could be uh, reproduced and uh, reproduced and produced in commercial quantities outside of the lake? Yes, actually, isa din yan sa mga targets. No? But primarily for conservation muna. And secondarily, mm. kung mapadami na talaga, we could actually uh, develop it as an aquaculture species. No? So um, it would take a very long time to develop that kasi nasa uh, infancy stage pa lang kami, nabuhay pa lang. Uh, sa pagbuhay pa lang sa kanila ang hirap na kasi uh, basta ang daming well ang daming factors no which which you need to to consider no in uh, keeping them alive in captivity and uh, of course yun ang pinaka end point din is paano sila paramihan de ba so uh, we also hope to develop protocols no for artificial propagation captive breeding as i've said and in fact uh, we have discussed that with the OSTP card so hopefully ay maano ma-approve yung aming um, 
application for funding para may continuity kasi one year lang talaga tong project na to and it ends uh, this June June of this year so after that ano na diba so yes. dapat ay may continuous funding pa rin para hindi din sayang yung effort namin and then we could explore uh, artificial propagation captive breeding so okay. yun <laughs> so uh, last question uh, from Willem With the recent use of extension of cyprinids in Lake Lanao, would yeah. the plan to release tawilis to Lake Lanao continue with the potential to harm endemic species? So, siguro, uh, what he's saying is that um, nag-extinct na yung cyprinids sa Lake Lanao and then you, meron tayong idea to bring the tawilis from uh, Taal Lake to Lanao Lake, uh, would that be uh, potentially harmful to the endemic species there? Well, actually, I've read the uh, paper ni Mamaril to uh, 2001. So, uh, kinompare niya no, lahat ng water quality conditions, uh, ano yung uh, anong mga species of fish ang meron doon. So, basically, kasi yung Sardinella tawilis is zo- a zooplanctivore. So, kumakain siya ng mga zooplankton. Ano, and Uh, ang reason din naman kung bakit na des na wala, 'di ba? 18 yung endemic fish species ng carp sa Lanao, nawala yung 15. So mm-hmm. because of the introduction of a piscivorous fish. So kumakain talaga kasi ng isda yung um, ano yon eh, sig- uh, snakehead gudgeon or Guris margaritacea. Nung inintroduce yun sa Lake Lanao, nawala yung mga endemics natin ng carp. So actually ganun yung kwento noon. Okay. So ang sinasabi kasi if you if uh, If Tawilis will be translocated to Lake Lanao, hindi siguro hindi din siguro siya mag magko-cause ng ganong harm kasi basically zooplanktivore siya and okay. zooplankton are very rich also in Lake Lanao. Kasi kinonsider din lahat ng mga uh, pareho silang volcanic ang origin, mga ganon yung origin, yes, okay. water quality uh, condition. So medyo nagma siya. But of course as I've said, uh, we need to look at the overall ecology of Lake Lanao and then see kung anong magiging impact once na inintroduce yung sardinella. So, kailangan pag-aralan talaga. Yes. We need to be very careful in translocating uh, endemics no, to other lakes. A question from Neslin uh, Shikes. <laughs> uh, what specific adaptations differentiate the freshwater sardine Uh, which is Sardinella tawilis from its sister species, the marine sardine Sardinella hualiensis. Well, physiologically, no, it was able to adapt sa freshwater environment. So from the marine, kaya na lang mag-adapt sa freshwater. So physiologically, yung osmoregulation mechanism niya, so yun siguro yung main difference. So if if You are also asking morphologically kung anong, hindi niya tinanong, ako ang nagsabi. Mm, morphologically yes. kung anong difference niya with hualiensis is, uh, it has something to do with the number of gill rakers. No? Mas kukonti yung sa tawilis compared sa hualiensis. And also yung snout length niya. No? Mas maikli sa tawilis compared sa hualiensis. But uh, yung pag-establish nila sister species was... Uh, dahil dun sa molecular phylogeny na ginawa ni Nawilet et al. So may nakita silang mga gene regions na similar, yung mga haplotypes, mm. thus establishing them as sister species. Okay. So yun yung parang direct descendant. So yung Sardinella hualiensis, ma'am, is it also present in Taal Lake? No. <laughs> no? Okay. It's a marine species. Actually, marine species. Uh, we have it in uh, the northern part, no, sa Cagayan. Mm-hmm. Uh, doon kinuha yung sampos eh, as well as in Taiwan eastern coast of Taiwan mm-hmm. so yun ang ang chinek nila kasi morphologically magkamukha sila okay. uh, out of curiosity lang yes, kasi po. because I've heard um, there were some issues na the, the, what kind, uh, it's a, a fish species that closely resembles yung tawilis yun yung pinapak ng mga taga, um, yung mga producers doon, I won't uh, say kung saan doon, but uh, yun yung deposit of us sa uh, Tawilis. So, anong species po ba yun, ma'am? Uh, kasi meron tayong white Pacific sardine, yung uh, Sardinella albelia. Mm, so, okay. yun yung uh, uh, nakikita dito sa southern, sa... Uh, 
southern part natin no no so yung malapit sa actually malapit sa sa Balayan Bay no mm-hmm. and then um we, we also have species sa north yung tinatawag na ano nga uh Hualiensi. so marami tayong we have actually 12 species of of sardinella in the Philippines. So, mm-hmm. si Tawilis lang talaga yung freshwater. Pero, pag tinignan mo sila, magkamukha talaga. <laughs> Ang hirap i-determine na, i-distinguish, I mean, yung yes. mga species na yon. So, uh, kaya nila ginagawa yon Because, it, pag Tawilis kasi, it commands a higher price no, compared sa mga uh, marine counterparts niya. Kaya siguro yun yung reason kung bakit dinadaya nila yung consumers. Pero, we really have to Uh, establish ano ba ang pagpumunta ka ba sa south, sa supermarket south supermarket sa supermarket ala <laughs> pa ako saan pumunta supermarket dapat alam mo no visually yes, ano kaya tawilis kaya to or hindi ang hirap talaga ang hirap okay. tingnan pero generally speaking mas maliliit yung tawilis compared dun sa marine counterparts niya i see okay pero of course nagbabari yung size so medyo tricky din no. Uh, baka naman kasi pag pin rito na siya pareho lang ang Magkaib- lasa. <laughs> Magkaiba. Magkaiba ma'am? Yes. <laughs> I see. Okay. So a uh, question from Oliver Alay Alayhos. Um uh, will your limnological station accept trainees or OJTs for conducting uh, embryological studies for tawilis? Uh, sure. Proper- <laughs> Sure, of course. Sige. Welcome na welcome kayo. But the thing is, since COVID tayo ngayon, may pandemia. Yeah, so, sure. nakahold lahat ng mga laboratory activities. No? In fact, yung mga students din natin sa UPLB, bawal din mag-lab. No? Mm-hmm. Yung mga graduate students natin and all. Uh, lalo na yung mga OJT. So, sa ngayon, bawal pa. But uh, pag umoke na yung ating... Um, pag lahat tayo na-vaccinate na and na-reach na natin yung sinasabing herd immunity kung kailan man yun, mm-hmm. uh, we can we would be very happy to accept uh, researchers from other institutions or students from other universities. Okay. So Oliver, uh, stay put lang. <laughs> Hopefully, in a matter <laughs> kaya yan, of a few years. Hopefully. Uh, sa museum din, marami din kami nag apply na interns but uh, we were not accepting right now kasi mayroong moratorium for accepting interns uh, a policy by the uh, university. So, uh, from Lou Merilles, Uh, have you tried collecting and transporting juvenile tawilis? Uh, would juvenile tawilis, uh, would they have higher survival in captivity? Well, uh, that's really a big question. No? Uh, usually, kasi pag sa aquaculture, no, it's really very hard to uh, keep mature individuals uh, alive no, in captivity. Mas madali actually yung larvae and juveniles. But then again, um, uh, well, in, in a paper by Ma'am Mucha, ano, meron silang na-identify na TRAs or Tawilis Reserve Area. And they found out na dun sa mataas na kahoy yata mas maraming mga larva. No? So maganda ding option yan no, to collect the larvae and then to bring them to the station mm-hmm. and then to try to re- and try to rear them also in captivity mas madali siyang i-rear pero i, I don't know how with tawilis kasi magkakaiba yung mga isda eh. yes. so hindi din natin alam baka pareho din siya ng lapu-lapu na napaka sensitive ng kanilang larva so very very high din ang mortality so wala pa ring nakakagawa noon so okay. nag-start muna kami sa mature individuals and it's actually another uh phase sana phase 3 na yan ano. So pagka sa phase 2, sorry, pag captive breeding kasi we also plan to do larval rearing and grow out pagka napaanak na namin sila in captivity. So that's just another area for research. All right. Uh, from Ma Eleanor Salvador, um, ang tanong niya, ma'am, is there a difference in size and taste of captive bred and from the wild? So, wala pa, hindi pa namin wala. tinitikman kasi hindi pa nga sila na, dalawang buwan pa lang sila okay. nabubukay sa stage. <laughs> Tapos Baka, kunti pa nila. So, pupunta tayo dyan. Meron tayong mm, sensory test na gagawin. Yes, so, na baka, baka nagbago kasi nilipat mo siya from an oligotrophic lake which is Taa Lake. Mm, papunta dun sa sa ano, sa aming culture tank. Yung, baka, so, like yung mga tilapia, di ba? Yes, Pagkagaling sa Laguna Lake, lasang, lasang darak, ano yun? Putek bur- na. Burak. Burak pala. Mm-hmm. Darak, iba pala yun. Darak. Burak. And then, pagkagaling sa Talisay or sa, sa Taal, masarap talaga yung ano. 
Oh, baka kasi may secret herbs and spices na nandun sa talik eh. <laughs> Oo, may component. Oo, oh, 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 tanong, ni Julio, <laughs> tanong po ni Julius. Tanong po ni Julius, nagsusorry po siya, late daw kasi siya. Ay, eh. Hi, Julius. Okay. So, pero um, in, uh, he's asking the survival rate ng tawilis pag inalis at nilipat na sa ibang habitat. Uh, siguro for recap lang. Oo, so... Uh... 10% pa lang yung na-achieve namin na survival rate sa ngayon. So grabe talaga yung mortality nila uh, especially during the first day no uh, in captivity. So dramatic yung pag-decrease. Mm-hmm. Uh, so mga 10% lang sa ngayon uh, for 2 months no 10% ang nabubuhay sa station. Pero for 10%. 2 months um, buhay sila, wala buhay nang, pa sila no. Yes, wala. Nagsa-stabilize maybe... sila around second week. Mm-hmm. So halos minimal na or pa isa-isa na lang yung namamatay. So uh, from Joseph Carmelo San Pascual, um he's Sir Batanggenyo. Joseph. Sir Joseph. Uh, growing up eating different tawili dish, uh, tawilis dishes. So question niya is what is the biggest challenge that you have faced in establishing uh, tawilis in captivity? Well, of course, the biggest challenge is keeping them alive for a long time because we are faced with yun, fluctuations ng water quality conditions, may mga diseases na nakikita, in fact, may mga infections. So, syempre, after mo siyang i-capture from the wild, you have post-capture stress, post-transport stress, no, which are evident like scale loss. So it's it's actually keeping them alive no, for a longer time. And ang pinaka-challenge din is to yung i-increase din yung kanilang survival rate over time. Uh, okay. Uh, follow up lang siguro. Um, hindi siya sure if maliputo. Uh, is maliputo or so endemic in Taal Lake? Well, karang ignobilis. Nako, maganda kasi. Si, si, Kinamamut siya yan sa NFRDI sa BIFAR. Sila yung mm-hmm. nag-aaral niyan. Uh, I know nagkaroon na sila ng breeding. Uh, may breeding na yata sila na na breed na nila in captivity yan sa kanilang botong station dito sa Batangas. Endemic nga ba siya? Sabi nila ay sabi ng iba oo, pero actually it's a migratory species. No, so nagma-migrate siya uh, pagka sa nasa lake water siya, we call it maliputo. Pag nasa marine, talakitok. So ah, current ignobilis, yun. oo. Yun so uh, I I don't think endemic siya sa tadi. I I may be wrong, no. Mamucha, okay. nandyan ba si Mamucha? <laughs> cool. Pero alam ko migratory kasi siya. So, hindi siya exclusively nasa. nasa so, okay. Um, any more questions from our audience? Uh, we'll just give you a few more uh, opportunities to throw in your questions bago tayo mag-end ng ating program. But just the same, you can start evaluating the seminar or the webinar by clicking on the link I have uh, put in the chat box. And if you do so, and uh, make sure that you answer the form by 3 p.m. today to get your certificate of uh, attendance. So, okay, may pahabol pa si Willem. Even if Lake Taal was connected to the sea, <laughs> did the Tawilis ever went to the sea or just did it just remain in the lake? They, they actually just remained in the lake. The lake. Uh-uh. So, the... Ha- Hypothesis, hypothesis, hypothesis ba yun, ma'am? From the sea, pumunta sila sa lake and then they never left. They Hindi. never came back. Nakulong sila. Ah, see. Nung okay. nagkaroon ng series of volcanic uh, eruption nung uh, 1574. So, nagkaroon ng mga fragmented rocks na na constrict ngayon yung malaking channel dati which connects the Now Taal Lake and then yung Balayan Bay. So, nakulong sila actually dun sa, sa Taal Lake. Hanggang and then fresh yeah, water sila. Kaya sila nag-transform from yes. salt water to fresh uh, water. purely fresh water. Oh. Uh, Napaka-interesting ng kanilang evolution. Would you think, Pam, since nang galing sila sa salt water, uh, eventually they can also revert to Yan, ang, salt ano. water species <laughs> if they are acclimatized to Yan, salt ang, water hindi. environment? Hindi pa nagagawa. But, uh, <laughs> Pabaliktad, ma'am. No? Oo nga, eh, pabaliktad eh. <laughs> Hindi ko rin alam kung kaya gawin niyo. <laughs> but basically, anyway, yes, basically let's... kasi yung, yeah. Okay, so, uh, wala na yata tayo questions. 
make sure that you evaluate our webinar. The link is there. So try ko lang i-repost ulit just to make sure that everyone is able to see it at mayroong at walang problema sa link. Okay. So uh, oh ito from July Peroy. Ano po ang stacking stacking density na ginamit nyo sa pagculture ng sal sardinella at tawili sa tank? So uh, <laughs> sorry. <laughs> for uh, ano muna trade secret po daw yun. Yes po. Opo, sorry po, hindi mo na pwedeng sabihin. Uh, so ang gawin po natin uh, tayo po may mga kakilala sa sa gobyerno. I think uh, ang pwede ho nating gawin dito is to make kalampag, di ba? Uh, call them out ask them to provide more funds para matapos na agad yung research project ng Fish Art. And then later on, masishare na yung ating uh, technology for everyone to use. Uh, uh, not only for conserving uh, the tawilis itself, but yung to, you know, make it a potential uh, food source uh, using aquaculture. So, uh, Siguro yun na lang po. And probably any last words, Ma'am Vivian, before we end the program? Yun. I hope uh, everybody will support the close season, as I have said. Uh, wag muna tayong maghanap ng tawili sa, sa pag-close season. So let's try to support all the conservation efforts of TVPL PAMD, no, as well as NFRD IBFAR, as well as the UPLB Limnological Station. I hope... Uh, this uh, gave you an insight as on um, uh, the the really the, the need no to conserve uh, our endemics no especially yung mga uh, critically endangered na no which is the wheels. Okay, thank you. So uh oh my last habol na lang kailan po ano, daw yung close season to si Dave? Close season ay ano um March April. Okay. March so, April of every year. So may resolution kasi yan na pinasa ang ang PAMBI. Okay, so meron pa kayong five days para magtiis pa. Oo, malapit na. May, <laughs> May pwede, pwede, na na, pwede na kayong ulit kumain. Okay. Kasi spawning season nila yan, kaya bawal. Okay, so thank you very much. So before we uh, uh, end our program, let, so the Museum of Natural History, Office of the Vice Chancellor for Research, Research and Extension here at UP Los Baños awards the certificate of recognition to Dr. Ba Vivian C. Camacho for serving as our resource person during the 2021 MH Biodiversity Seminar uh, on saving the endemic tawilis held today, April 26, 2021 from 10 a.m. to 11.30 a.m. Philippine Standard Time via Zoom. So in witness whereof, the signature of our director, Dr. Marian P. De Leon, is here unto affixed. And make sure that you uh, were able to click on the link that I have provided in the chat box. But uh, if you want to answer your the, the questionnaire later, uh, just go to https bit.ly slash 2021-bss- Eval, and we will be accepting responses only until 3 p.m. today. Uh, you can visit our website at mnh.uplb.edu.ph. Write us an email at mnh.uplb at up.edu.ph. We are on Facebook, uh, Twitter, um, YouTube, and Instagram. Just look for the handle UPLB Museum. And uh, we have an article there at Wikipedia and TripAdvisor. Incidentally, we are live in Facebook our first ever and uh, the recording of this webinar will be uploaded to our YouTube channel later today or probably tomorrow morning and uh, just go to youtube.com slash UPLB uh, Museum. So with that, maraming salamat po sa inyong lahat, Ma'am Vivian. Thank you very much for accepting our invitation <laughs> and uh, thank you very much then Flor. we will uh, for this week we still have two more one mm -hmm. on Wednesday and one on Friday uh, marami po tayong uh, webinars so marami po salamat and keep safe thank you ma'am okay. thank you very much thank you to our audience bye -bye. marami salamat po salamat po